Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Stephen Roth and I'm a board certified oral and maxillofacial pathologist. The word biopsy can sound scary for multiple reasons, especially when it comes to the oral cavity. In this video, I want to discuss what to expect during and after an oral biopsy so that you're a little bit more prepared. But first, a quick disclaimer, and that is that all opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone, and do not represent any organization that may employ me or that I may belong to, and that this video is for educational purposes only and should not serve as medical advice. Should you have any questions or concerns regarding your oral or systemic health, please see your nearest oral or systemic health care provider. Another caveat too for this video, and that is this is how I approach biopsies. Different providers may have different methods or opinions, and this is just how my practice works. All right, so let's talk about oral biopsies. Biopsies in the oral cavity can be done for multiple reasons, not just when we're concerned about oral cancer. Biopsies can be done to remove benign growths or to diagnose different inflammatory conditions. They allow us to know what's happening on a cellular level. The longest part of biopsy procedures when I do them is usually not the biopsy itself, but going over all the consent forms. It is important to discuss the risks and benefits before agreeing to a procedure so that the patients understand what could potentially happen. Biopsies are relatively low risk, especially when they're small and adverse events are rare, but biopsies are not a no risk procedure. The next longest part of a biopsy procedure is getting numb. I make sure that I know that my patients are 100% numb prior to starting my procedures. I even test them with a tool called a periosteal elevator. It is pokey, but not sharp. It's normal to feel movement and pressure, but there should be absolutely no pain during a procedure. I numb the tissue the way a dentist would a cavity or a crown, but usually it doesn't require as much because the tissue is much easier to numb than the tooth. The biopsy itself is usually very quick, sometimes less than a minute. It can look a little scary from the patient perspective, so I usually tell my patients it's okay to close their eyes. Just like a filling or any other dental procedure requiring anesthesia, the patient is numb for quite some time once it's completed. I always remind my patients to be careful when eating afterwards until they regain feeling. Some patients leave with a stitch to help close the biopsy site and to help with bleeding. There are two types of stitches resorbable, which will disappear on its own, and non-resorbable, which requires a provider to remove it. I almost always, if not always, use resorbable sutures in my practice, and it's not uncommon for the stitch to fall out the next day. Many times, I don't even use a stitch at all, but use something called silver nitrate to help promote healing and stop bleeding. This can cause the tissue to look really ugly for a few days, maybe black, maybe gray. I tell my patients to ignore it. Some providers use a laser for biopsy, which should only be used in cases of excising benign bumps, but in these cases too, the tissue can look a little black and ugly. If the biopsy was done near the teeth on the gums, I usually tell my patients to avoid brushing this area for the next day or two until it feels comfortable to brush again. The most common after effect of a biopsy is pain and soreness. Some patients have said it's not painful at all, and some have had three or four days of discomfort and soreness. I usually suggest that if my patients are able to, to take an over-the-counter pain medication like Tylenol or Advil when they get home before the numbing wears off. This will prevent soreness right after the procedure. If the biopsy was of the tongue, sometimes patients can experience an earache or a sore throat due to something called referred pain, that is, pain from the tongue that gets picked up somewhere else. This referred pain will also go away with time. Because of this discomfort and to maximize healing, I tell my patients to stick to soft and lukewarm food for two or three days. Nothing too hard or crunchy like crusty bread, potato chips, or even crunchy veggies. Instead, oatmeal, eggs, yogurt, and yes, even ice cream can be eaten until the site has some time to heal. I also instruct my patients to let their coffee or tea cool down a little bit so that they don't burn the area. I also tell patients to take it easy for a day or two. No powerlifting or marathon running. Another potential effect is bleeding. I make sure that all of my patients leave the office with no bleeding, but sometimes bleeding can occur, especially if the patient is on a blood thinner. 
A little thick blood mixing with the saliva is pretty normal, but thin blood that is starting to pool and fill the mouth is concerning. I tell my patients that they can first try putting a lot of pressure with a moistened, cool black tea bag. Black tea contains tannic acid, which promotes clot formation to stop the bleeding. And even just the pressure of pushing the tea bag in the area can help too. If this trick doesn't work, I tell my patients to go to the emergency department right away. Occasionally, if a biopsy is done in the area of a lot of nerves, like the lower lip, floor of mouth, tongue, or posterior palate, small nerves may be cut or removed during the biopsy. This can lead to small areas of numbness that may or may not go away. Again, not common at all, but a possibility. It's not the entire mouth, it's, it's usually just a pinpoint area that has this effect. Finally, patients should know what to do in the very rare case of infection. The oral mucosa heals very quickly, and infections from biopsies are exceedingly, exceedingly rare. It's totally okay and even normal to see yellow in the area of the biopsy. That's just normal healing tissue. But if a patient develops a fever three to five days after the biopsy, develops a warm swelling in the area of the biopsy, and or liquid yellow pus comes from the site, I instruct the patient to let me know immediately so that I can evaluate the site and put the patient on antibiotics. Like I said, all of these things are within the realm of possibility, but are very uncommon, at least in my practice. It's best not to scare patients, but to prepare them and to let them know what to do in case of these worst case scenarios. Oral biopsies are relatively simple and safe procedures with two or three days of recovery time for most patients. Even so, it's important that patients know what to do in case of these rare adverse events. If you or someone you know is getting an oral biopsy, be sure to share this video with them so that they can be more prepared. If you have any questions before your procedure, make sure you talk about it with the person that's performing the biopsy for you. If you want to see more oral path tips, be sure to subscribe and turn on that bell notification. Thanks again for watching and be well.